I assume everyone can hear me. It's not generally a problem I have. Uh, so like Ali said, so my name is uh, Ruben Schaefer and I work with QuestPoint. Um, we'll go over uh, about me, which is my favorite topic, and then uh, go about us. Some basic information to give you uh, really the information, like what we were trying to solve, the problems we were having, and how we addressed them. Uh, and that would go with the legacy system and then the redesign. And then we'll close up with uh, comparisons, closings, any questions. I've got my little tech nerd there if you have uh, some serious questions. So about me, I'm currently the Chief Information Officer at QuestPoint. Uh, before that, I spent a few years at Microsoft designing the back-end system for uh, Live, Xbox Live. So if you play video games or anything. Um, roughly 13 years of computer work, whether it be data architecture or uh, coding. I went to school for uh, math, computer science, and realized that I didn't need to graduate with that because I had that mostly down, but I stink at business. So uh, graduated with uh, technology management. Uh, what does all that really mean? Yeah, I'm a giant nerd. Uh, so about us, QuestPoint, uh, we're really uh, excited about data. We started about five years ago and with the goal of providing monetization for application developers and third-party products. Uh, and that's our QuestPoint marketing. And then recently, we decided to uh, start a secondary uh, subsidiary called QuestPoint Decision, which helps gain insight uh, using that data. So QuestPoint Marketing, it's been around for five years. We have a user panel of over 75 million unique users a month. And we're in approximately 145 countries. So we've got a really good range of demographic uh, geolocation information like that. Um, and so QuestPoint Marketing, the goal was to help these application developers actually make money, become ROI positive on these apps that they're developing. And so we did that with helping them advertise uh, with retargeting, lead gen, um, affiliate marketing, uh, items like that. Uh, with that, such a big user base, 75 million users, like we have a really good understanding of demographic information, of geo-targeting, retargeting, competitive intelligence. Uh, and so that's why we started QuestPoint Decision was because take Home Depot as an example. Uh, if Home Depot wants to understand you know, its users, it, it tracks via its website the comings and goings and refers. But through us, we can actually show why they're competitors, like Lowe's, like what's driving the end user to their site? Why are they making money? Why are they getting the sell? And we're able to leverage that and help Home Depot change the way they do business. Uh, and this is kind of our ecostructure, ecosystem with uh, big data. Uh, you know, we still use uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and we'll get into this in the design. We use Couchbase for the uh, high throughput and reliability, and then Hadoop for the post-processing aggregates. Uh, so some of the basics, the data. We have extremely high volume of incoming data, uh, structured, unstructured, uh, in which anyone that's ever worked with relational databases, unstructured data just doesn't fit. Uh, the data is used to both drive the application user experience, but also for reporting. Uh, you know, BI analysts and the, the financial guys and ladies always want that data real time. So the data has to be available for real time, and it needs to be available to post-process and make better decisions later on. Um, so we'll get into some basic numbers. Our Current average network traffic is about 62 to 65 terabytes a day. Uh, just database writes alone, we do over 11 billion, which I don't know the math, but I think that's around 125,000 a second. Uh, and our concurrent users are around 6.1 million. So we are always busy. Uh, having such a big geo footprint, we have users online every second of the day. So the legacy system. So as I said, so with QuestPoint marketing, we were helping these application developers make money. Uh, you know, so we, show, we helped show ads. And originally what we had done uh, was use a third party uh, ad server. And the latency was up to one or two seconds, which is unacceptable for showing an ad. You're on a page. You don't want that little box to show up you know, five seconds into it showing you an ad. You probably don't want the ad there anyway. So we took a first stab at it, and we created our own in-house ad server. 
We did this with uh, some Dell 810s, which are not cheap. We put in Fusion IOs, which uh, if anyone knows about them, they're also not cheap. And uh, some fairly good RAM, 64 gigs. With that, we are still using Microsoft SQL Server, which means you then have Windows licensing, you then have SQL Server licensing, and we had to write an in-house proprietary sharding system, which allowed us to actually scale SQL horizontally. Uh, SQL by default does not allow you to do that. Um, all that hardware, and it still wasn't super performant. And then we get into the BI analytics portion, and you know, we have all this data, we're collecting all this data, and trying to make better decisions for our customers so that they can make more money. So we spend a lot of money on this, this one box. Uh, it's a Dell R910, seven Fusion IOs, a terabyte of RAM. It's got 10 gigs going into. This box is a quarter million dollars. It is a beefcake. Uh, yeah, epic failure. So <laughs> though the ad server was uh, horizontally scalable, it was just cost prohibitive, right? I mean, on top of the hardware, on top of the fusions, on top of the RAM, on top of Windows charging you constantly, I used to work for them, I can say that. Um, it, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, the scaling was intensive and complex, right? So we had to use replication to get the buckets across in this sharding system. And then you have to clean up the buckets in the previous systems. It was not good business. Um, and then you look at the, the R10 for the business. Uh, despite all that horsepower, aggregation queries, simple aggregation queries, summations and counts on billions of rows were taking up to 12 hours. And we have really good DBAs. I mean, these are index seeks running. I mean, it's just processing that data on simple aggregations. Taking 12 hours is not real-time decisions. That's, you've already too late. You've missed the boat. And uh, so we had, you know, we had to take a time. We had to step back. We stopped looking at the technologies we were using. You fall into that pit of just using what you're familiar with. And uh, we decided, well, without technology, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get sub-100 millisecond delivery time. We're trying to post-process the aggregation, feed it back into the ad server so that you know, our customers are getting the best benefit for their buck. So we think, well, we want scalable. We want it to be cheap. We want commodity hardware. We want open source. And ideally, we want cheap redundancy. Because anyone who's used SQL, right, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, you have to have a server. If you use mirroring for that quick failover, you have a server that's primary, and then you buy another server that just sits there. If it fails, you're lucky. If not, then you've doubled your cost. Uh, so the technologies we chose were Couchbase um, for the transient data and Hadoop, you know, because it's got HDFS and MapReduce uh, and things like Hive, Pig, and Uzi in this abstraction layer where we can control data uh, as our technologies. Uh, we did our due diligence. We, you know, did Mongo. We looked at Cassandra. Uh, we tried to look at all the options, Redis, uh, you know, even Dynamo. And really, Couchbase was just super easy. It's point and click, right? Uh, once you start encountering problems, they're very attentive and supportive. So those were the technologies we chose. We get back into it. Now I'm going to, I said commodity hardware. We already had some Dells laying around, so we cheated a little bit. Uh, so we took 14 Dell 610s, uh, 48 gigs of RAM, and the OCZ uh, solid state drives, which I think are like $300, not super expensive. Uh, and, and they roughly perform at a pretty good I operate. Uh, we took that, and we put Couchbase on there. We're only running 1.8, so we haven't upgraded yet. But the latency went from you know one to two seconds uh, to I think we average about 10, sec 10 milliseconds to get the data in and out. So that latency is awesome, right? You don't even notice that as an end user. Uh, we were also capped, I should say, on the legacy system. So with the, the SQL Server, not only was it expensive to, to break out, but there is just an amount of connections and throughput you could process. So the APIs, we were limited with the number of APIs we could scale. So with the legacy system, we could only run 50 uh, APIs for the ad servers. And with these 14 uh, Couchbase servers, we're already up to 70 APIs. And we have the ability to scale to 100 before we have to add any more to the cluster. So their ability to process data in and out is super quick and efficient. Uh, the BI server farm, uh, we replaced that one server, that behemoth, 
with a 40 node Hadoop cluster. This is definitely commodity hardware. Uh, it's like, you know, $1,400 and $1,500 a box. Uh, the guy sitting next to the tech nerd built them all. I feel bad for him. Um, and we increased the storage, right? So that, that BI box that had the seven Fusion IOs was roughly eight terabytes of data. Super expensive. The 40 node cluster, we have 620 terabytes of data storage. And that's with the replicas. You know, we have three replicas because we want the data redundancy. Um, and uh, we lost roughly 400,000 IOPS. Some of the benefits. So the ad server farm is now capable of doing 1.5 million operations per second. It actually goes up to two on the 14 node cluster. So uh, I don't know what that math is, but it's pretty high. Uh, our daily average per second is 472-ish thousand operations a second, which I think puts us, we do a, over 88 billion operations a second, a, a day. And that's on a 14 node cluster, so amazing that we can do that. Uh, cheap and easy to scale out, uh, unlike with SQL where you have to do the replication, set up the bucketing, delete the stuff. Uh, with Couchbase, you seriously add a node, point, click. You know, if we do it during peak, it might take 15 minutes to rebalance. And that server's live. No downtime, no, no blips. We're still serving, still performant, and we have the ability to scale out more. Um, you know, if we hit a bottleneck, you just throw it in there. The fact that Couchbase and Hadoop both, they have this built-in redundancy, right? So we have the, the ability to store the replica data, uh, which is awesome because, as I said, with our legacy system, for us to have really a standby or a hot swappable server, you're buying a standalone server to do nothing. That BI query, the simple aggregation that was taking 12 hours to run, dropped to five minutes. And we actually have that down to under two minutes, which means we're able to take this competitive insight, right? So, you know, why is this user on, you know, I don't know, Nike? They're on Nike. What ad should we show them to get them to Nike? Uh, so we're able to like check the behavioral patterns that these users display. You know, what geo are they in? What demographic do they fall in? What has their historical browsing been? And then how do we decide what ad to show them to best, you know, show return an ROI on, on our customers' products? Uh, and, you know, going 12 hours, you just can't do that. That's not very seamless. It's not very real time. Uh, but two minutes, that's not too bad when you're processing billions and billions of records. Uh, with abstraction layers like Hive, uh, we have a bunch of learning curve, a uh, bunch of BI analysts, and their learning curve is almost nothing. Uh, Hive has not quite ANSI compliant T-SQL, but very similar style. And so our analysts don't have to be trained to get this data. And whereas SQL couldn't, wouldn't return it, even if you run max dop and you know, our beefy one terabyte server would still take hours and hours to get this. With Hive, there's no problem, right? They, they log right in, they're able to generate the reports and get it going. And with both Couchbase and Hadoop, we have the ability to run multiple processes at the same time on the same cluster. And we don't have contention trying to access that data. So, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. This was during our slowest day um, at a random hour, and this is the operations for our cluster. Um, so, not, not too bad performance. And then uh, a cost comparison. Uh, hopefully you can see the slide. Uh, we add more than 200% to storage. We take away 400,000 IOPS. We take away all the licensing fees. We take away all the non-commodity hardware, the Fusion IOs. We increase our performance, we decrease our latency, we increase our customer's ROI, and we spent you know, roughly $130,000 less. And due to this, with Couchbase, we have the ability to completely scale. Like, it's just add another node. So what we noticed with Couchbase and Hadoop was you know, a dramatic reduction in cost. We were able to increase performance, uh, increase scalability, increase the redundancy. 
And for those of you who uh, maybe haven't utilized Couchbase's support, like we, you have the ability to call in. Right? These guys are amazing. Uh, we've hit some stumbling blocks with them. They were able to point us to some changes we were able to make on our stuff. If they need to do a hot fix, they were able to push it out. Um, you know, they're always available. And that really helps you fit your application uh, you know, nicely so that you're able to get the best performance, the best throughput, and uh, ultimately decreased headaches because uh, those suck. I probably spoke a little fast, but okay, sweet. Thanks, guys.